Like you guys wanna move out there? We're in there head bobbing to the music. Alright, let's see your answers on this one. Who knows the shortest book in the Bible? Thanks for tuning in to this week's Bible Trivia. We're your hosts, Curtis Hunter here. <laughs> and Jacob Hogg. <laughs> <That's, laughs> I'm the last one you want to go to for Bible Trivia, probably. But How's everybody doing tonight? Chime in. Let us know you're here. Let's see. We've seen the K-Singers. We've seen them. Where'd they go? Well, don't be shy. Go ahead and say hi. <laughs> I'm a poet and didn't know it. <laughs> There we are. All right, now we got them popping up. Kind of, sort of. Alan and I. How about that, Alan? Oh, let's see. Yeah, we've got a few coming up. If I can get this thing to cooperate. <laughs> oh, there we go. There's my beautiful wife. Hey, baby. Karen Berry, good to see you. Carol Cotner. 
Uh, up, Sarah. I hope everybody's uh, staying blessed. What's up, Larry and Hog? <laughs> Hello, Barb. Hey, Andy. Hey, Andy. Glad to have you guys here with us. Andy, your hair's going to grow out by the time we see each, see each other again. <laughs> I shaved mine. I cut mine last night. <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> All right, here, let's see. I know she didn't color it though, Curtis. No, no. Wow. All natural there, buddy. <laughs> no need for color. Let's see. We get anybody else? All right. Oh, there's the Ashley Barbie. See you. All right, I'm trying to get there. We All right, so we, we're we going to take a look at a little bit in Jonah tonight. Um, Paris and I were talking last week. We was getting ready for Sunday, and I was trying to get a feel about where he was going with the message so I could have a little bit to go with it. And, you know, he's been talking about, he's been building up, you know, about talking about the soul wounds. And he gave us a little bit of intro to it Sunday. Um, but he and I were talking. He was telling me he's going to be talking about the, the Egyptians and, you know, how they wandered around. And how they were wounded as a nation. And as he kept talking about that, you know, as they, all the murmuring and complaining that they do, that led to their own wounds. By that, that just really stood out to me um, that a soul, soul wound can be self inflicted. You know, my first thought about that was a soul wound was a past hurt that somebody did to me and I held on to it. But a lot of times we do it, we yeah. do it ourselves. You know, that makes me think, Curtis, uh, sometimes we get in wrong relationships. Yes. You know, we get a soul tie to a relationship that we never should have been in to begin with. That's right. And then we get tied to them, and then all of a sudden we break up, and it's a horrible breakup, and you get a soul wound from that. Yeah. And, you know, that's that's right. It is right. Just made me think of that. Um, but as he, as he started telling me about that, you know, I've just, I just had watched and heard a message by Stephen Furtick quite a, several years ago, and it's always stuck with me. Uh, but my first thought when he was talking about the Egyptians wandering around and being a wounded nation and how they brought it on himself was the story of Jonah when God asked him to do something and he ran entirely the other way and got himself in this whole mess. And that just kept standing out to me. I didn't know exactly how to tie it in Sunday, but I just stayed with it. So I was, called Jacob and seen him a copy of this video of that message and said, watch yeah, this. Really and, um, I said, I think it's what we're going to talk about. You know, Wednesday night, we'll just start going through Jonah. We'll point out some of the points that he goes over in that message, and maybe we'll come up with a few of our own as well here. But um, before we get into that, what about you guys? What's your first thought when you think of Jonah, the story of Jonah? We'll give you a few seconds here to give us some comments. What's your first thought when you think of the story of Jonah? Let's see here. Here was Terry Suzanne. Good to see you. Yeah, what's the first thing that comes to mind when, when Curtis brings up Jonah? It's yeah, a, thanks everybody. Don't everybody comment at once, okay? It, it's almost like we're in the sanctuary trying to get some <laughs> yeah. discussion going, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, it's probably a little hard. Don't even want to start with that right off the bat. I thought, you know, we might well get something though when they're not face-to-face. -face <laughs> but we do have a little lag time between what we're doing and when it gets to them, so it could be a second. Um you know, right. go, ahead, go ahead. Well, you know, the first thing that when we were listening to that <laughs> sermon. Well, we got a big fish. Big <laughs> good, fish. One. good one, Andy. <laughs> Sarah, there we go. So a man running from God. Now they're coming in. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> big fish. <laughs> uh, and that was my first thought, too, Sarah, is a man running from God, running in the opposite direction. Um, <laughs> there's it getting swallowed up. <laughs> Uh, non obedience, yes. Running from God, running from your calling, uh, yes, all good answers. Like I said, that was one of the first things that yeah, popped that up in my mind. That worked out pretty good. It did, was. it wasn't bad. Um, but you know what? I think 
you know, at the same time, you know, we all think of that, but I think it's kind of a bad rap for him. You know, we when we read the story, we read it as it's happening now, right yeah. then. But you know, what about what about you? Have you ever ran from anything that you think God told you to do or was disobedient? Yeah, um, I mean, there's a, I can probably keep rattling off things where uh, even things where you know you should have done it, but you just didn't do it. Right. Um, it wasn't necessarily like a, a prophet voice from God telling you to go talk to Nineveh, but I've had a lot of times where I knew I shouldn't have done it. That's right. And I did it anyway, or I put it off, or, you know, whatever it was. I mean, so, yeah, I think if you bring it down to a personal level, I mean, I have certainly fit right into that picture. Well, let me read these first couple of verses real quick. It says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, Go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it. I have enough problem talking to the person in the checkout line <laughs> or talking to the guy at the corner looking for a handout when I almost, you know, you feel that nudge. I have a problem with that. Much less go cry out, not just, not a small town, a great city. Yeah. God has called him to grow. That's, that's no little menial task that yeah. he's going to do, and yet... He gets this bad rap of running. What would you do if you heard God say right now, go to St. Louis and walk out through the streets with a megaphone? Tell them that. <laughs> I mean, when we look at it from that perspective, it might be a little bit different story. You know? yeah, uh, most people probably say that was the devil. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they probably say, I ain't doing that. That's, a, that's the wrong voice. And, you know, when, when this all happened, like I said, when, if you look at it from real time, when we, when we read the Bible, you know, we're kind of trying to read at it. As the story is happening, but when Jonah had done this at the time, he probably thought he was being pretty logical. It's pretty crazy to go to St. Louis with a megaphone and start hollering out, just like he probably thought it was pretty crazy to go to Nineveh. Is this really God calling me? You know. So. You know, the other thing, Pastor always talks about that word "arise," where it's uh, get yourself to a higher level so yes. you can hear from God. And it says he he told Jonah to arise, but what he did was he went down. Right. He went down to Joppa, is what it said. That's right. It said, rise, go to the wickedness. Uh, but Jonah rose, he arose to flee to tarnish from the presence. See, in my version, it says he went down. He said, right, he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarsus. So he paid the ferry and went down into it. Um, there's, there's a lot right here in these first few verses, man. Um, but Jonah rose to flee to tarnish from the presence of the Lord. I was going to ask you before we got started here. You said something during care group before this all happened that just stood out to me about when you get in their presence, all you ever want is more. Yeah. And you want to go back. And this just stumps me. When he, it's not, it's hard to fathom, but it says he ran from the presence of God. Not necessarily just the, the voice of God or the persona of God, but the actual presence of God is what he was fleeing. Yeah. And that's kind of, that kind of threw me there. Um, as you said, it says he went down to Joppa. Any time that we're running away from God, like Jacob said, we're going down. You know, we, we try to think of ourselves always going up. And then uh, paid the fare. You want? What do you think yeah, about that one? Paid the paid the fare. You know, it always costs something when it's your when it's your will. And it reminded me. I was telling Curtis earlier that I bought a car one time that I really liked, and you know, I had a car, but I wanted to buy this other one because I don't know. I just got in the moment, and so I don't know who told me, but. Uh, it's always stuck with me. It says, if it's your will, it's your bill. But if it's God's will, it's his bill. And so I paid for that car <laughs> dearly uh, every month. Uh, but, you know, it just made me think about it. If you get into your own flesh, a lot of times you're going to pay the price and you're going to pay the fare. Right. And that's just a part of it. But if you get into God's will, he will make every provision work out. And uh, that's... I'm always reminded, you know, Pastor always reminds us, he didn't come up with it, but... Uh, Sin will take you farther than you want to go, yeah. keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more, more than you want to spend. More than you want to pay. That's right. So when you over here, That's no he, good. he paid the fare for going this other direction. Um, you want to bring bring up that picture about the miles? Oh yes. Not only did he run the other way, get this, guys. Let's see here. Yeah. Not only did he run. Not that one. We want. Let's go. But he ran a long way. All right, so Joppa is where he's at, around about. God calls him to go to Nineveh, 550 miles. But he decides to go to Tarshish, 
2,500 miles <laughs> in the opposite direction. Now, when you're talking about running. Have you ever done that? You know, if you'd have just done what God told you to do, you would have been done and over with. And except you go, avoid, you spend more trouble avoiding what God wants you to do. And you round the mountain and round the mountain and round the mountain. When you could have just went and did it, got it over with, and arose and got with God. So instead we run twice as far, three times or four times farther right. away when we could have just done it and been over with. Sometimes we work harder getting out of work than we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. I guess we're probably the only people that have ever done that, though. Yeah, right? you holy ones. You would never do anything like that, right? <laughs> Just kidding, just kidding. Love you guys. <laughs> All right, so we'll keep on going here. The storm at sea, verse 4. So, but the Lord sent out a great wind. You mean the Lord would send out a storm like that? A great wind. He he would set a, he would set something like that in our paths? <laughs> Man. The Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea. So the ship was about to be broken up. Then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God and threw, the, and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah, here he goes again, had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship, had lain down, and went fast asleep. So the captain came to him and said to him, What do you mean, sleeper? Here it is again, arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. And they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Think that was an accident? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I kind of doubt it. Then they said to him, Please tell us, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? So he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. And the men were exceedingly afraid, and they said to him, Why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do that you may calm this, calm this storm for us? For the sea was growing more tempestuous. And he said to them, Pick me up, throw me off the boat. <laughs> I mean, and, and then the storm, and then the sea will be calm for you. Right. I like what Mr. Furtick said about this. He said, uh, He said, Some of you need to get Jonah off your boat. Good. And that made it makes me think there's a you know um, we tell our kids that a lot you know you don't want to be hanging around the wrong people, but you know someone going the opposite way from God uh, caused that whole boat to be in turmoil, right. and as soon as they threw that disobedience overboard, everything went went back to calm. Right, and I like the you know the illustration he uses. Some of you may not necessarily have Jonah on your boat, but maybe you've got him in your phone. You've got some contacts in your phone. You know you're. <laughs> People you shouldn't be talking to, or this or that. People, it's always getting you in a mess. Yeah. And you know, some of you need to throw off, don't throw John off the boat, or you need to use that on an iPhone. You've got that swipe method on your phone. <laughs> yeah. You just swipe, and there's a red square that says delete, and it says swipe delete. So get Jonah out of your phone, get him off your boat. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that was a really good illustration there. Man. The way you done that, and we'll watch a little bit of him here in just a second. Um, but. It, Another thing that gets me about this is all the other guys are calling out to their God. So Jonah, he's got to, you know he's got to be at a point if he don't think that he can call out to God anymore. He thinks he's better off being thrown out the ship to the sea than he is to even try to call out to God. And that's it just kind of blows my mind. You know, all these, you know, these other people, they're, whatever they serve, they're crying out to them to get out of it. Jonah, he's he's not come to the point where I've done messed up so bad, it's not going to do me any good. Yeah. It's not going to do you guys any good for me to call out to him. Your best bet is to get rid of me. Um, so he does that. Uh, let's see, where do we take off with? That's uh, 16. Uh, then the men feared the Lord greatly, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. I mean, that was a real eye-opener for them to throw that man overboard right. and for it to all go back to normal. I mean, that was a testimony in itself. And it said, And the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow Jonah. 
You know, and I think that was that was something else he brought out that was good. God appointed it. He appointed that was his deliverance basically was right. that fish to come swallow him up because he was probably half drowned in the ocean, and he appointed that fish to come and swallow him up. And I think sometimes, I mean, in his message, he he brought that out that sometimes your if your deliverance is too um, too cushy, too cushy, too cushy. I mean, if he if he sends a Cadillac your way to pull you out of every trouble you ever got into, you might get in trouble just to get a Cadillac ride. Right. But he he brought some deliverance, and he may not have liked it, but it was still his deliverance. And that was his only way out. Right. Let's let's take a second about. Watch this five-minute clip of this video. I think you guys will really enjoy it. Um, and we'll pick up right after that. I started driving to the hospital. I'm driving to the hospital, and I remember I've got a couple of hours still left to go because I'm out of town. I'm driving to this other town. And so I, well, I drive by this uh, hitchhiker and decided to pick him up because that's what you do when you're driving yourself to the hospital. You pitch up hitchhikers <laughs> when you are a Christian like me. I don't even know why I picked him up. It was a season in my life when I pitched, picked up hitchhikers. I don't do it anymore. But this guy gets in my car, and I don't really feel like talking because I'm driving myself to the hospital because I have a hole in my esophagus that's burning my life away. This guy's all talkative, all chatty, and everything. And so we ride together a couple minutes, and uh, I'm low on gas, and I pull into the gas station, and I'm feeling like cheerful, uh, not a cheerful giver, but I decide to, if he probably wants something to eat. So I said, Hey, man. I said, I'm going to pump the gas. You go in the gas station. Get yourself something to eat, whatever you want. I'll come in and pay for it afterwards. He goes, well, actually, I see a McDonald's over there. And it wasn't like one of the McDonald's that was right there in the gas station. I'm going to have to go now drive through the drive through and go to McDonald's. But I said, all right. You know, Jesus said, go the extra mile and all that. So I'm like, all right, man. Well, let me pump the gas. We'll go to McDonald's. We're going through the drive-thru at McDonald's, and I'm just going to order whatever, you know, because I can't eat anything. And so here I am ordering food for a guy. He's sitting there. I'm about to smell this food in my car and this delicious McDonald's food. That's right. I'm not too good for McDonald's. I said it was delicious. I'm not that health conscious. Freak. And so, I, so I, I'm going to order, and he interrupts my order, and he's like, no, I want a quarter pounder holding the mayo. Hold the onions. I said, All right, he wants a quarter pound. Let me get a quarter pounder. Hold the mayo, hold the onions. He said, And some chicken selects. <laughs> now, listen, this was not some skinny hitchhiker. He didn't look like he needed a meal that bad, so my compassion is running out quickly. <laughs> I said, All right, he wants a quarter pounder. Hold the mayo, hold the onions, and some chicken selects. He said, And some fries. I said, And some fries, please. He said, and uh, biggie size. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm not saying this because remember, I'm a good Christian. I'm a man of God. I'm thinking, man, you should be grateful to get a ride. Now you want to hold the mayo, hold the onions? You got me spending $75 in the drive through at McDonald's, and I can't even eat? Then he took it way too far. He said, can I get a McFlurry? I said, no, he'll have a water. And I got, I got him a water. Isn't it interesting how he can go from, I just need a ride, to I need some chickens? Isn't it interesting how you can go from God, if you'll have mercy on me, a sinner? Isn't it interesting how you can go from God, if you'll get me out of this situation? God, if you'll just be with me. But then over time, something happens along the journey, and you start thinking, you know, I don't like the way it smells inside of this whale. Isn't it interesting how when you started serving God, you didn't need people to notice you. You were just glad to be known by God. But over time, you start getting real picky. I came to tell you today that if you'll get grateful, see, this is what Jonah did. He's in the belly of the fish, and the Bible says that in Jonah chapter 2, for several verses, he's complaining, he's blaming, he's talking about seaweed around his head, he's talking about the billows that raged over him, he's describing in detail his distress. But watch chapter 2, verse 9. I love it because the Bible says that when Jonah made this shift, everybody say shift. He said, but I, with shouts of grateful praise, 
will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. I will say salvation comes from the Lord. And I don't think it's any coincidence that in the very next verse, after Jonah got grateful, even in a hard situation, when Jonah got grateful, even in the belly of a fish, when Jonah got grateful, he got out. I came to make an announcement. When you get grateful, when you open your mouth, clap your hands, shift your mindset, lift your eyes, and give God praise. No, Jacob, you ain't getting a McFlurry. You're getting a water. Is that it? I just want some chicken selects. But man, is that not spot on, though? Yeah. When a blessing comes and we want more, and we want more, and we want more. Yep. No matter how, I mean, just like Jonah, I mean, God, even the, when he didn't even cry out, you know, he already, before Jonah even cried out to God, the well was on the way. He said he already <laughs> prepared a fish for him. Yep. It was yeah, all, it. it's like Pastor said, the pass was already in the air. Yeah. But he didn't catch it until what? He got off of his soapbox. Mm hmm. And he just began to praise God. See, Thanksgiving and praise turns around even a even depressed attitude. If you're in depression right. and you will start looking around, do you have a pair of socks? Say, Lord, I thank you for these socks or a couch or a pair of shoes or maybe they're old raggedy shoes, but you'll start being thankful for just what you have. Looking around and seeing what you have and being thankful, it will turn depression into joy. I mean, there's just something about thanking God for everything that he's done and is doing for you. I mean, that's where God looks at what, how you're doing with what you got now to even uh, see if you're ready for promotion or bigger and better things. I mean, if you're not paying attention to where you are and what you're doing right now and being thankful, I mean, there's no reason for him to think that you'll be thankful with, with the next big thing. Right. For every affliction, for every doubt, for every negative moment in your life, there's about 23,000 or better reasons to give praise and glory. I looked this up. I'm glad you mentioned about the socks. I looked this up today. We got about 23,000 23, reasons to be happy. On average, a person at rest takes about 16 breaths per minute. This means we breathe about 960 breaths an hour, 23,040 breaths a day. <laughs> so it, surely out of 23,040 breaths a day, we can give God some of those breaths. <laughs> we can lift up a breath Amen. of praise and a shout of praise in thanksgiving to our Lord and Savior. Through even our afflictions, through our storms, he's already got a way planned for us if we'll just receive the pass. And, and he's talking about that story of the hitchhiker, and it really just brought out something with me. It's maybe not a direct correlation here, but... I've got, you know, I worked at Home Depot for a long time. I've got a lot of friends that still work there. I've got some work at Menards. Um, and there are so many of us, and you can spin this so many different ways, some of them who still get to work or some of them who still have to work, depending on who you are, which way you look at it. Yeah. But there's a lot of those people out there in those stores that, regardless of their reason, they're still working. And this is crazy times. None of us has the answers or what to do about it, the right way to do about it. But I'm just hearing, you know, the, the keep up with these guys and talk to them and how much people, and it's, I'm afraid, to, I'm, I am going to say it, though, it's probably the people that's getting paid more now on unemployment than it was as working that are going in there and complaining about only 100 people being able to go in the store at one time or having to wait on a longer checkout because there's fewer staff at the time. They just always want more, yeah. no matter their circumstance. And they're just crying, they're belly aching. And I just, let's not be that way. If it's any of us, let's not be the way. Let's give up a shout of praise. That's those that is still working. Yeah. Show that, me appreciate them. That I complaining, mean, that complaining leads to bondage every time. Every time. The end of it is bondage. That is right. You know, that's, you know, uh, get grateful and get out. Get grateful and get out of whatever depression or trouble or slump you're in you get grateful and you'll get out just like jonah did once he got grateful god commanded that fish to spit him out on the shore and he went on about god's business and that's the same way we can be he you know even though jonah was running he still had prepared the fish he still dealt with him by putting this by using the storm to deter him and he still 
was wooing him in, if you would. He is, he is still there, ready for you to turn back to him and just start talking to him again. He'll put you right back on track. That's right. That's right. Well, guys, we love you. We hope you got a little bit of something out of this. Um, but we'll see you back Sunday morning. But um, let's close out. Let's uh, pray. We love you guys. Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now. We thank you for all your blessings, all your grace, and your mercies that are new each and every day, Father. We just love you and we honor you. I thank you for each and one of our, everybody watching here, whether it be watching live or going to be watching replay later. Lord, I just pray blessings over each and every one of them. But as you guide their, guide their steps, Lord, and direct their paths, we give you all praise. We give you all glory. There is none like you. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are our strength, our shelter, our strong tower, our fortress, Father. The name above all names. We give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. We love you guys. Have a good night. Have a good week. And we'll see you soon. All right. See you later. Oh, you did it?